Today, we're going to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> okay, just one second. <clears throat> okay, good. We're going to talk about mucus in the back of your throat. I'm sorry. I just, I just had to do that. So I've done a video on this topic about six months ago, but I didn't cover all the underlying causes to this problem and then understand a little bit more about it. And then also have remedies that don't end up creating bigger problems. Unfortunately, when you treat mucus problems medically, uh, it comes with a package. It comes with side effects, especially if you use antibiotics when you really have a viral infection because it's not going to do anything except you know make your immune system very, very weak. Um, a good portion of our immune system actually has to do with our friendly microbes that are living all around us, outside and inside. And as soon as you start killing those guys off, you have a weakened immune system. And then you get this overgrowth of other problems. So when we're dealing with mucus in the upper respiratory tract, um, you have to realize that anytime you kill off bacteria, you then get an overgrowth of fungus or candida or yeast because the bacteria keep in check all the different fungal type microorganisms. And this is why people develop uh, candida in, throughout their body, in their mouth, in the private parts. And also that relates to the sinuses after an antibiotic. Here you are dealing with the bacterial infection. Now you're dealing with a fungal infection, right? And then you take stronger medications and then you get this resistance to this uh, treatment. And now you have even a stronger microbe. So it puts you in a really bad place. So an ideal solution is a solution that doesn't give you a bigger problem after you're done trying to solve it. All right, so let's just dive right in and talk about all the potential causes, starting with the one that I talked about in the other video, uh, GERD. Okay, GERD is a situation where you have um, some really severe acid reflux because the valve on the top of the stomach is not closing. So acid kind of goes up into the esophagus. It can go all up into the throat and it can irritate the structures of the throat and create this inflammation and mucus. And a lot of people have that problem and don't really connect the dots, okay? And of course, if they do connect the dots, they're put on an antacid or some drug that shuts down the acid, which usually just keeps the problem there longer because the actual underlying cause to GERD usually is a deficiency of acid. You don't have enough acid or the acid is not strong enough. So anything treatment-wise to weaken that or make this worse or alkalize your stomach tends to cause you to go from bad to worse. If you have this problem, I do want you to watch a complete video on acid reflux and GERD, so I will put that down below. But the whole point is this, if you attack the right problem, you get rid of the problem and the symptoms. So one quick way to know if your GERD or acid reflux, whatever is causing this mucus is simply not to necessarily spend a lot of money on a scope. You could do that to, to kind of go down and scope and see what's going on and do a very expensive evaluation. But what about just taking a very inexpensive remedy like apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons in some water, and you just start drinking that a few times a day before the meals and see if your symptoms go away. And then you pretty much know that was it. You can also take something called betaine hydrochloride, which is another good remedy. It's an acidifier. It'll help build up the hydrochloric acid in your stomach. And you would just take like five before a meal. And you might want to go up each day to like one more, one more, because some people need like a good amount. They might need like seven, eight, nine, ten 10 before a meal before they see changes. But then they're uh, feeling much, much better. Another indication to know that if you might have this GERD connection to your mucus is that you also have gas, indigestion, bloating when you eat. Next potential cause is this post-nasal drip situation. Um, and that's creating mucus. And it's just coming from uh, in the back of the sinuses and it's leaking down into the throat, causing you to uh, cough up mucus. This could be coming from a bacterial infection, a viral infection, a fungal infection, which also includes yeast and candida. It can also be coming from biofilms. If you haven't seen my videos on that, a biofilm is a collection, a colony of microbes that band together uh, to help them survive. 
and usually they produce this mucoid or mucus layer, this slime, okay, uh, which happens to be common in the sinuses, um, and then sometimes even a calcium uh, shell, as in like you would get tartar in your teeth or even placking in the arteries. But in the sinuses, you just might have this mucus layer, and it's a biofilm that keeps things resistant against antibiotics and other forms of medical treatment, yet it keeps this constant irritation in your sinuses where your sinuses are always stuffy, you can't sleep at night because you're snoring, and you got this uh, mucus in the back of the throat. And a lot of times, if you have more of a fungal or yeast or candida or biofilms, it's just all year long you have this problem. And usually it gets triggered by taking an antibiotic. So if you've taken an antibiotic, let's say months ago or a few years ago, and you notice, wow, my sinuses are worse after that, suspect more of a this overgrowth of either fungus or biofilms. Now, normally we have biofilms in the sinuses, in the mouth, in our bodies, but we shouldn't have a severe um, situation where it's an overgrowth of biofilms. And that's what I'm talking about. But think about this. These microbes are just trying to survive, right? They need to protect themselves. So anytime you try to kill them with the wrong thing, they will resist that and become stronger. And especially after antibiotics. If this infection, this postnasal drip infection is more bacterial, the mucus will tend to be more yellow or green. If it's viral, it'll tend to be clear or white, but that's not 100%. It can cross over. You can also have an infection where you have both microorganisms living together. So there's a couple of solutions that you can do for this postnasal drip, depending on if it's mild or a major problem, okay? If it's a mild problem, you can just use basic uh, salt water or saline solution. I recommend using a sea salt solution. And you get a neti pot, which is like this little nasal rinse, and you can uh, put it up one nostril and let it drain out the other one. You're diluting the salt. There's a lot of videos on the like demonstrating how to do it. it's really, really easy, but it can flush out the sinuses. Apparently salt is antimicrobial, especially for bacteria and uh, fungus and yeast and candida. And potentially it could help viruses too, to some degree, uh, as well as help reduce how the biofilms stick to the inside layer of your membrane. However, if it's a major problem, you're going to need something stronger. You basically dilute and half a teaspoon equals 2.5 milliliters of sea salt into some container. You'd have a cup of water, which is eight ounces, or 236 milliliters for those of you in Europe and my friend Dennis. And so you dissolve the salt in the water and you use it as a nasal uh, rinse and you just flush it out. That may be enough to handle this problem, okay? But let's say you need something stronger. Okay, this next combination is very effective and a lot of doctors recommend it and use it. You're gonna be using a small amount of baby shampoo. Yeah, baby shampoo. The reason why you're not using regular shampoo is just gonna to be too harsh and it's gonna irritate your mucous membrane. So you wanna use something that is like a no tear, very gentle and something that has the least amount of chemicals. I'm not gonna necessarily give you any brands. You're gonna to have to do the research, but. All you do is you take two teaspoons of this baby shampoo and put it into four cups of water. And then you would use that as a nasal rinse four times a day and it'll help the mucus dissolve because it's a detergent. It works great on that. And because you're diluting it, it's not gonna irritate the inside mucus membranes. If you also wanted to add some of that salt water, you can just do that too. And now you have this uh, pretty effective remedy. There's other things you can do if the mucus is being generated in the throat or maybe lower in the sinuses back up um, behind the sinuses way back there, or even in the larynx um, or just the back of the throat. That could happen too, or you can have an infection in your tonsils. So let's say it's back there. What do you do? I recommend povidone iodide, right? You can get it at the drugstore, okay? And you dilute it. You want to get the one that says 10% on the bottle. That's really 1% absorption, okay? And you want to dilute it by 50% with water. So you just take basically a half of an ounce of this povidone iodine and you mix another half ounce of water, okay? 
So what you do is you take a Q-tip, dip it into the solution, and rub it around the inside of each nostril. Iodine is a very potent antimicrobial, and it's going to be diluted enough where it's not going to irritate your mucous membranes. But now we add the iodine. That's the icing on the cake. And that actually will directly kill off things in your sinuses. Then what you do is you gargle with the rest to get this material in the back of the throat. So then you gargle it for like 30 seconds, and then you spit it out. Okay, And you do that twice a day with a 12-hour time frame between when you gargle it. So now we expose the back of the throat to this povidone iodine, which is a very powerful antimicrobial. So that way we can topically put something to start to break up this mucus. Now, of course, if this problem is an allergy environmentally, the best thing to do is to avoid certain parts of your environment and do fasting. Prolonged fasting improves the immune system and also it actually can help even get rid of allergies. Um, so that's one thing. And then as far as food allergies, the most common food allergy involves dairy. So I would just simply cut out dairy and you're going to find many times that mucus will go away. Now, one more point about the mucus and where it's generated. Okay. So if it's in sinuses or if it's in the throat or it's coming from the stomach coming up, that's the most important thing to figure out. Um, that's the whole point of this video is to really isolate and dig down where the problem is coming from. Okay. Now I'm going to give you an, another thing to do that I didn't practice. that seems to work good. And I've done a video on this relating to sore throats, but you can apply this to this problem too. So if the problem is stemming from the back of your throat, okay. Um, what you can do is a, um, kind of a pressure point, acupressure point thing, where you're pressing on the back of your neck. Now, you can't press on the back of your neck. You're going to have to have someone do it to you. But I did a video on it, and you basically have someone take their two fingers right here and press in the vertebra, in the back part. And then what you do is you kind of isolate where that irritation is or where that mucus is coming from. It could be like right here. It could be lower. It could be somewhere through here. And then what you do is you draw a circle around to the back part of your neck. Now, if you think this is weird, I understand, but it really works. You have to try it, okay? Once you isolated the exact opposite point in the back of your neck, you have someone press into that point. And the way that you know that you found the right points, because sometimes it's hard, is it'll be very, very sore. So have the person kind of go up a little bit higher in the neck or a little bit lower until they find the exact point where it's really tender. And then you have them apply that pressure for a period of two minutes. Now the fingers are might get tired. You don't have to press that hard, but you're going to start feeling things breaking up or things kind of draining or things feeling less congested or irritated. I don't know exactly why it works, but it works. And I've done it many, many times. In fact, I would have people fly in from different places around the country for this problem and I would work on them through the day within a few days it would greatly help them if not completely get rid of it so this is just another thing to do which is a very uh, ninja technique and so if you have someone around you that can do this on you that's great I have built a device a do-it-yourself device you can get that too I'll put some videos on how to apply that but it's a little massage tool that you put in the back of your neck and you can lay back and let gravity put pressure into the back of your neck but you can apply pressure at different points in your spine to just to help uh, whatever's going on on this side right here. If there's some type of um, place where you're getting irritation in your throat, whether it is a sore throat or just a point of where you're generating uh, mucus, because some people generate a mucus from their larynx, okay? And that's your voice box and they get hoarse. So they have all this mucus generated from that. This is a great technique. When I did a video on this, I had so many success stories of people doing this. So you can read them, check it out, try it. If it works, great. I mean, what do you have to lose? You don't want to do anything to lower your immune system. You want to enhance the immune system. The immune system is ultimately the thing that's going to heal you, not anything else, not a remedy. Um, so all you're doing is assisting the immune system. So garlic is at the top of the list, consuming more garlic, garlic through the day garlic in your food, very potent anti 
everything. I'm talking about antiviral, bacterial, yeast, fungus, mold, biofilm, garlic. It should be at the top of the list. Number two, no sugar. Sugar feeds these microbes, especially if you have fungus, yeast, or candida, okay? Avoid all sugar. And then there's three remedies that I always recommend for the immune system. A lot of vitamin D, minimally 20 to 30,000 I use every single day. Vitamin C, make sure you do a natural version, not the synthetic version. And then zinc. Those three are the go-to for every single immune problem. I would recommend that. And then lastly, I would recommend if you have coughing, let's say you have a small child that's coughing at night because of this mucus, uh, sometimes you can take um, calcium lactate and that will just suppress the cough. It's a good remedy for coughing. Um, that could be mucus related or not, but coughing through the night, especially for kids or adults, take the calcium. If you look up um, one of the symptoms of low calcium, okay, hypocalcemia, uh, that would be laryngeal spasm. So you get muscle spasms, especially in this, this area right through in the throat, and that can irritate and create a coughing sensation. All right, I gave you a lot to swallow on this one, no pun intended, but the next video you should watch is the other video on uh, how to get rid of phlegm and mucus, and I put that video up right here. Check it out.